Hello guys, welcome back for another quick data factory video. I know it's summer and it's pretty hot outside and there is no motivation to learn Azure right now, but I promise you that it will be a very quick video. This time we will see how to validate file schemas in data factory. One of the first things you do when you build a data pipeline is to check whether the schema of the file is as expected and complies with the schema we defined. So how can we do this in data factory? We will proceed with two examples. The first one using CSV files and the second one using JSON files. Unfortunately, we cannot validate both files the same way due to some limitations in data factory. And this is where data factory falls short of our expectations. We expected something more advanced and solid. Anyway, let's move to Azure and go through the examples and you will see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have four files, two JSON files and two CSV files in our storage account. Let's see this CSV file that contains data. If you click on edit, you will see the data. We have three columns, ID, age, and name, right? And data beneath those column names. And then we have another CSV which contains only the schema, only the columns, ID, age, and name. So what we have to do here is go to our data factory, create a new pipeline, and then use the get metadata activity. Drag and drop the get metadata activity twice on the empty canvas, and one will point to the source, get source structure. We are going to get the structure of this uh, of the source data. The data you would be using in order you know to play around with to copy the data whatever you want to do and the reference file which contains only the schema get ref structure right so we are going to get the structure of both those files and compare them and if they are equal then we will proceed with whatever we want to do right and that's the uh, that's the concept uh, behind it it's nothing too difficult so let's create a new data set pointing to azure blob storage and let's select csv for our file let's point to our source file test data csv this one is the file that contains the data so click on ok and next to field list click on new and uh, you know click on the drop down and scroll down to structure click on structure and this will give you the structure. Let's do the same for the reference dataset. So click on new, point to Azure Blob Storage, click on CSV, and then select your link service, and point to the file that contains only your schema. In our case, this is it. Click on OK. Remember to click to tick this button. First row as header if it's not ticked. Right, because we're going to get the schema, so click on OK. And now, again, next to field list, click on New, scroll down on the drop down menu, and click on Structure. And this, now if we run this, click on Debug, run this, it will take only a few seconds, and it will provide the structure of the files. Now, click on this arrow here, that the output arrow, and you will see. Now, this is the structure of the csv file that contains all the schema it has three columns name which is type string age and age and name all of them are type string right and the same if we get when we see the structure of the file that contains the data the actual data you will see we have three columns id age and name exactly the same thing so now we have the structures of both those files and what do we have to do just compare them so if you drag and drop an if activity if condition here let's drag and drop the green arrows from the get data meta get metadata activities into the if condition here under activities next to expression so click on add dynamic content we have to check if those structures are equal so under functions type equals and here let's place our output from the metadata activity so get ref structure comma 
and then we want the get source structure structure here right output here we want structure now we are comparing the structure of both get metadata activities click on ok and if it's correct then let's uh, await that would be called success and if it's not correct so if the schemas don't match under false let's type fail right perfect so if we run this now it should go into the true it should the condition should evaluate to true right because we are comparing the same structures essentially from different files the structures are the same here you can see it went to success now if we move back to our our csv files now if let's say in our data if there wasn't this third column name and let's remove this column click on save and now if we run the pipeline again we should the expression should evaluate to false and it should go to fail right because the structures are not the same and yes it went to fail because if you click here you will see we have id and dates only in the file that contains the data and in the reference structure we have three columns id age and name so this condition evaluates to false and this is how you can compare csv files the schema of csv files so now you could ask me why we cannot do the same using json the reason is if you go into the documentation you will see it says metadata structure and column count are not supported when getting metadata from binary json or xml files so if let's say we create another pipeline with the get metadata activity and if we point to a json let's point to a json right json file here let's point to our one of our json files so json data right click on ok and if you click uh, new next to fields list you will and scroll down in the drop down menu you will see you know, the structure here let's run this and you will see exactly the same message that the documentation says uh, says there is an issue with that right so here it failed and it says metadata field structure and column count is not supported with json datasets so how can we solve this issue well a quick way would be to use data flows so drag and drop a data flow here under settings create a new data flow Create a new data set, click on new here, point to Azure Blob Storage, click on JSON, and on your link service. Now point to the schema that contains, point to the JSON that contains the schema that every incoming JSON would be validated against the schema. So click on that, click JSON with dummy data but with the right schema, this is important, and on advanced click on open this data set so let's open this data set and under schema you can import schema from a sample file or from connection usually I use a sample file that has the correct schema and every incoming JSON is validated against this sample file so import schema from connection or store or from a sample file you have the schema here in the data set and back in the data flow instead of use allow schema drift untick that and click validate schema under projection you will see the schema now if you click reset it's going to reset the schema if you import projection it's going to get the schema from the file you are pointing sometimes those two do not match so make sure when you uh, whether you want to import the projection or reset the schema now if you click on data preview you will see the data right okay so let me actually under source options let's click on array of documents click on again 
uh, I forgot about that and fetch the data again and we have the data okay so we have one record right with all those columns now if we go back in the source in the data set and click on open and point to another JSON that has one column less right click on that it, this JSON has one column less now do not change anything here we want the schema go back into data flow and now if you click on data preview click on refresh it should throw an error because it validates the schema right so you can see here we have this validate schema option and under data preview you will see that we are missing a column named data so if you want to validate now all the incoming JSON schemas use this validate schema box here and in the data preview you don't even go, need to run the whole pipeline just use data preview refresh the data and it will give you an error if uh, you're missing a column or if you're going to allow you know or, or if you're going to allow this JSON to you know to pass the validation click on allow schema drift and then under data preview if you fetch the data again let it refresh you will see that the data column is null so it's going to insert null in uh, in the data column if this is what you want this is it for today guys this is how you can validate schemas in azure data factory is it the most convenient way no is it the optimal way no However, it does the job and it's a fine approach if you don't have time to develop more complex validation methods. If you like the video, please click the like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.